Manual Handling Policy and Procedure for Ballarat Specialist School. Manual handling is when you hold, lift, push, pull, shove or use your body to move things or people. It is covered by the Manual Handling Regulations and includes heavy work and everyday tasks. Manual handling injuries can result in discomfort, strains, pains, dislocations and even fractures causing approximately 40 to 50% of all injuries in schools. Although they can be caused suddenly by a single incident, manual handling injuries are usually caused by an accumulation of stresses placed on your body over a period of time. A serious manual handling injury can affect the long-term quality of your personal, work and family life. These are all manual handling tasks that we commonly do or have been seen at Ballarat Specialist. The carrying of a large number of books, lifting and moving sporting or classroom equipment, storing and retrieving boxes above or below our shoulder height, the moving of furniture, typing at an incorrectly set up workstation, the hanging of artwork or posters, pushing wheelchairs and walkers, and lifting and transitioning with students. Let's look at some common causes of manual handling injuries and what we can do to prevent them. Twisting while lifting loads can result in serious soft tissue damage. So plan before you lift and if necessary, turn your feet instead of twisting your body. Bend your knees, not your back. This uses your thigh muscles, which are the strongest muscles in your body. Bending forward places stress on your back. A 10 kilogram object held out at arm's length places a strain of around 100 kilograms on your back and shoulders. So move closer before lifting. Handling loads above shoulder height puts you at risk of shoulder and back injuries. So use a safe step ladder with wide treads or store it lower down. The longer the distance and time spent carrying a load, the greater the strain on your body. So avoid long distances. If possible, break loads down to smaller items or use a trolley. Unfortunately, we all know someone who has been injured at work and the 2019 work cover claims for Ballarat specialists show that 50% of accidents or injuries occur when staff are transitioning with students. Our statistics show that two thirds of workplace injuries or accidents occur to ES staff members. Manual handling based accidents can cause a range of injuries to the body and the 2019 Work Cover Injuries record show that accidents resulted in common injuries to people's backs, knees, legs, arms, hands and shoulders. The most common injuries recorded resulted in skeletal injuries with 20% of work cover claims being made, followed by lower limb injuries at 12% and upper body injuries at 8%. This is important to know as incorrect manual handling techniques are hazardous to these areas of the body. Therefore, when you're participating in activities that require manual handling, such as lifting, make sure you follow the five step SMART rule. S stands for sizing up the load. Assess the load, its shape, size and weight, and determine where the load needs to be moved and placed. M stands for move the load as close to your body as possible by carrying the load close to your body where possible and securing your grip. A, always bend your knees. Make sure you keep your feet apart and in a comfortable position, usually in line with your hips, ensuring that you minimize lower back bending. R, raise the load with your legs. Lift the load with your legs, not your back in a smooth motion, avoiding twisting and jerking movements. 
Maintain normal curvature of the spine. In T, turn your feet in the direction you want to move. Ensure that by changing direction by pointing your feet and not twisting your back. To set the load down, squat down, keep your head up and allow your legs to carry the weight. When completing the manual handling task of lifting, look around your environment and consider, is there another person who can help you lift? This is called team lifting. Team lifting will reduce the pressure put on yourself and reduce manual handling injuries. When team lifting, you need to consider the following. Are there enough people? There needs to be a minimum of two people to do team lifting. Just remember, there's no I in team. Are all lifters of the same size and with similar strength? As this helps prevent an uneven lift load. Are there any known pre existing injuries? If so, don't lift. Who is coordinating the lift? Nominate one person to coordinate where you are moving and how you're moving there. This also includes is there a plan and has this been communicated to all those involved in the lift? These are safety practices to put in place to prevent manual handling based injuries for all staff at Ballarat Specialist School. When transitioning with a student in a wheelchair, do not push the student's wheelchair with one hand and hold another student with your other hand. Additionally, do not allow the other student to hold the student's hand who is sitting in the wheelchair as it is moving. Therefore, you are best to always push the wheelchair with both hands to even out the weight load and to steer the chair safely and efficiently. The additional student can hold onto the frame of the wheelchair. Best practices to reduce manual handling injuries when transitioning with a student in a wheelchair. Always refer to the student's transfer and positioning profile and this will inform you of the student's transitioning needs. If you are ever unsure or don't understand the student's transitioning needs, please contact a staff member in the Allied Health team and they will demonstrate or help where required. Common practices seen at Ballarat Specialist School that result in manual handling injury include blocking a student with your body. This is seen when a child is trying to force their way through into an area. It is never safe to use your body as a blocking mechanism unless the child is at extreme danger. For example, preventing them from running into oncoming traffic. Blocking a child with your body can result in falling over potentially hitting something hard or the child falling on top of you. Also, never hold and pull a student's hand while transitioning. This can result in serious shoulder injury such as dislocation or may even occur as repetitive muscle strain resulting in long-term injury. Therefore, best practices to prevent manual handling injuries caused by pulling, blocking or hand holding when transitioning with students are ensuring the students have enough time to transition to their destination. Some of our students are slow when transitioning or do not cope with sudden change or pressure to transitioning quickly. Therefore it's essential to consider timetabling transition times into your daily schedule to ensure the students aren't rushed. This may mean leaving five minutes earlier and allotting that to your timetable. Also, where possible, avoid routes or triggers that will stop a child from transitioning. For example, walking past the therapy room where the student continually refuses to move because they want to go inside. Common practices seen at Ballarat specialists that can result in manual handling workplace injuries include catching of students when they drop or linking their hands. Sometimes it's an automatic reflex to catch a child who is dropping. However, you need to put yourself first and not cause injury to yourself by catching what is essentially a heavy load. Injuries can be far worse when they are the result of a quick or sudden response to an action. The small act of holding a student's hand whilst transitioning 
can result in long-term repetitive strain, in, strain injuries, even if the student isn't actively pulling on your hand all the time. As an employee, it's your responsibility to look after yourself the best that you can. Ultimately, there is no benefit to the students or yourself if you end up with a serious workplace injury. Recovery time can be as little as days, up to years, and unfortunately sometimes even be lifelong. Therefore, it's essential to apply best practices to prevent manual handling injuries caused by the catching of dropping students or holding hands. As educators, it's essential that we give all students the opportunity to learn the skills to transition independently where they can. By students playing a major role in their own transition, this reduces workplace manual handling injuries and gives students a skill for life. It can be simple as changing a handhold to a C-grip. Therefore, if the child pulls or tugs and drops, you have the ability to quick release. Seek advice from many school leadership if a student is struggling transitioning and your safety and their safety is at risk. Alternatively, contact Allied Health for transitioning and manual handling strategies and put in an individual referral for the student's transitioning needs. If you get injured at Ballarat Specialist School, first you must seek the advice of the school nurse and be checked. If the injury occurred due to a hazard and it is possible that someone else can get hurt, the area must be isolated and leadership or maintenance must be informed to prevent further injury to others. If you are hurt, you must inform your direct manager or supervisor. It is essential that you complete all relevant paperwork. This includes the EduSafe form, which can be found in your classroom red folder, at the sick bay, or by downloading the form from the intranet. After filling out the documentation, you must keep a copy for yourself and give a copy to the school nurse in the sick bay. If a medical review is required due to ongoing complication, it is advised you sort out medical support for the injury and complete all work cover claims stating the incident occurred at school. If you and your doctor decide to make a work cover claim, you must get a certificate of capacity which will outline if you are allowed to return to work or have any limitations to your daily task. You must have the form signed by your supervisor and also contact Roger Bush. For further information or support regarding manual handling, please contact a member of the school principal team, Roger Bush, or a health and safety school representative. There is also a free OHS advisory service you can call if you have any concerns regarding safety. Please refer to the school's manual handling OHS documentation. The school is an active participant in safety management training for leaders and we are all individually responsible for completing our own yearly OHS manual handling and ergonomic e-modules. If you have any concerns regarding your workstation ergonomic setup, please contact one of the school OTs for a workplace ergonomic assessment and recommendations.